and welcome back future Pokemon battlers this is Professor Hemlock at Four Seasons Academy and today's class as you saw is going to be Competition Basics Boot Camp now this is going to cover a lot of overview for a lot of different things and primarily it's going to be types, natures, abilities and items now I chose to do it this way because it's it's a lot to, to wrap your mind around uh, it'll get easier though because there will be pictures and there will be definitely uh, explanations and uh, links <clears throat> so first we're going to do an overview of types we're going to have pictures for that and we're going to have advantages and disadvantages and then we're going to have an overview of natures and we're going to have pictures for that and we're going to have uh, pictures that show the stat increase and decrease for those natures and we're going to have an overview of abilities and items. Now, the only thing about abilities and items is that I can't show pictures for every single item in Pokemon. And some games have exclusive items, such as like your key items, that are needed to complete like the next part of the game or anything like that. But if you want, and you should, there will be links in the description below so that you can uh, look these things up yourself however I will go over notable mentions for various items and abilities and with that being said we're gonna start today's class on types alright so we have 18 Pokemon types fairy, steel, dark, dragon, ghost, rock, Bug, Psychic, Flying, Ground, Poison, Fighting, Ice, Grass, Electric, Water, Fire, and Normal. Now, I chose this picture because it will better help represent what they're strong and weak against. So, starting from the top to the bottom, Fairy-type Pokemon are weak to Poison and Steel, but are strong against Fighting, Dragon, and Dark. And I want to note that Dragon-type moves will have no effect on fairies whatsoever. Dragon Claw, Outrage, Dragon Tail, anything that is a Dragon type move, it'll just simply not work on a fairy. So even if it's a fairy electric or fairy in any other type, it's not gonna affect it. That's just how the game works. <clears throat> Moving on, we have Steel types that are weak to fire, fighting, and ground, but are very effective against ice, rock, and fairy types. Then you have dark types, which are weak to fighting bug and fairy, but they're strong against psychic and ghost. And I want to note that psychic type Pokemon, their moves, psychic, psi beam, even future sight, they will not hit dark types. They have the same immunity as uh, fairies do to dragon type moves. And then for dragons, they're weak to ice, dragon, and fairies but are only strong against other dragons, which isn't a terrible thing. If you have a dragon, counter their dragon with your dragon. It's almost like fighting fire with fire. Then you have the ghost types, which are weak to other ghosts and dark type Pokemon, but are very effective against other ghosts and psychic types. And now you have rock types, which are the first type to have like five weaknesses well, they're not the first type to have five weaknesses, but they're the first on this list that has five weaknesses. Water, grass, fighting, ground, and steel. And oh my gosh, when you read it, you kind of ask yourself, like, who would put a rock type Pokemon on their team? Like, they have so many weaknesses. But we'll discuss that later when we're talking about team dynamics. And they're strong against fire, ice, flying, and bug types. Now, moving on to bug types they're weak against fire flying and rock but they're strong against grass psychic and dark and I like to think of bug types as like being the underdog so when you see a, a, a smart person or like the cool kid represented by psychic and dark in my mind uh, you know it's it's almost like yeah they're strong against the grass psychic and dark matchups because they're just crafty like that. At least that's how I like to see them. Then you have Psychics. Oh my goodness. One of my favorite typings in the game. Weak to bug, ghost, and dark types. Strong against fighting and poison types. <coughs> then you have flying types. 
that are weak to electric, ice, and rock types, and strong against grass fighting and bug. Next is ground, which is noticeably weak to water and grass and ice, but very strong against five types itself, fire, electric, poison, rock, and steel. And then you have poison, which is weak to ground and psychic type moves, but very effective against grass and fairies. And then we have fighting. Fighting types are weak to flying, psychic, and fairy, but are strong against normal, ice, rock, dark, and steel. And I want to mention that fighting type moves will not hit ghost type moves. Or they'll not hit ghost type Pokemon, rather. They have a an immune immunity you know to ghosts and then you have ice types which are strong against fire fighting I mean I'm sorry weak against fire fighting rock and steel but they're great against grass ground flying and dragon this is a really long list and like the way I'm looking at it it's a little smaller than I would like for it to be so I'm trying to like hurry up and you know go through these and then you have grass types, which are weak against fire, ice, poison, flying, and bug, but are strong against water, ground, and rock. And you have electrics, which only have a weakness to ground. And it's one of the only two types on this list, as you can see, that has a weakness to, and it has one weakness. And it's strong against water and flying. And then there is water types, the ever calm and beautiful water. Weak against electric and grass, great against fire, ground, and rock. Then you have fire types, which is weak against water, ground, and rock, but great against grass, ice, bug, and steel. And finally, and I still find this to be like very strange to this day, you have normal types. Normal types are a bit of a underdog situation. Yes, they're weak to fighting types as the chart shows, However, there's nothing that they're strong against. But being that they're normal types, they have what I like to call a bit of uh, unpredictability. Because most normal types, as we will discuss in later videos, they have the ability to learn moves of any of these types. There's normal Pokemon that can learn fairy type moves like Dazzling Gleam. They can learn electric type moves like Thunderbolt. Ice type moves like Ice Beam, Blizzard. Water type moves like Surf, like the list goes on and on. And that's what I think makes them dangerous. So in a sense, I can understand why normal type Pokemon do not have a type that they are inherently strong against. However, I still wish they did have a type that they were strong against. And hopefully, maybe Sun and Moon might display that. But until then, this is how things are as of sixth generation so normal type moves don't hit ghosts and ghost type moves don't hit normals that's need to know information ladies and gentlemen um it didn't used to always be like that as i recall uh ghost type moves i think could hit normal normal puck types but uh i don't think normals could hit ghosts and then they just made it where normals can hit ghosts i mean normals can't hit ghosts and ghosts can't hit normals same thing with fighting but it makes kind of sense because they're they're strictly physical moves there's no you know there's no quote-unquote energy behind them at least that's that's the best way i can think to explain it um but yeah these are the 18 types these are the things they're weak and strong to take note that grass and rock have the most that they're weak to but also take note that ground fighting have the most that they're strong against and I find it weird because now that I look at the typings in this manner I in all my teams I've never really had a, a fighting type Pokemon on my team and I don't know why now I'm very interested in making a team with a fighting type Pokemon on it so yeah and with that we're gonna conclude the typing overview and I want to continue by saying that types are, are important because of something called stab 
and stab just means same type attack boost every pokemon gets it and for example if a water type pokemon uses uh, a water move then its damage is boosted an extra 50 percent so let's say you have a blastoise and it uses hydro pump hydro pump is one of the strongest water type moves uh that you could use as a water type pokemon uh, it has 120 base power and gets 60 added for 180 damage. Also, if the Pokemon has two types, for example, Houndoom is both fire and dark. That means that both fire and dark moves receive stab. So, Flamethrower does uh, about 142.5 instead of its base of 95 and Crunch does 120 instead of its base of 80. Now, uh, the great thing about this is the fact that you have Pokemon who have multiple types. So basically, any move that they use that is of that type is going to get a multiplier of about 1.5 times its base. And that's how you're going to indicate how much a move does with stab. And with that, that'll conclude the section on types and stab now there will be links in this in the description below that'll take you to various pictures and uh websites that'll show you how you know the the type chart i really want to avoid using the type chart because when you look at it it can be very confusing but i find this picture to be the best illustrator for types and advantages when i think of pokemon natures i like to think of the attitudes that go into a pokemon the thing that makes anything that has emotion unique so i'm going to list natures that have no effect whatsoever on those attitudes of those pokemon they don't increase any stats, they don't decrease any stats. You have hardy, docile, serious, bashful, and quirky. Every time I see those on a Pokemon, I just think, gosh, those are just the absolute worst. Like, why couldn't it have been something so much better? Now, I'm gonna list stats that increase attack, and I'm also gonna list what they decrease. So starting with stats that increase the attack we have lonely brave adamant and naughty but they decrease defense speed special attack special defense respectively then you have the stats that increase uh defense which would be bold relax impish and lax and of course they reduce your attack speed special attack and special defense now you know these things come into play when you're breeding mostly because they kind of give you that extra push we'll get into EVs and IVs in a later class but for right now think of this as like your stepping stone for uh, making that best possible Pokemon six times because <laughs> you will have to do this six times for every Pokemon depending on how you want to use your team and depending on what exactly you want them to specialize in so moving on we have timid hasty jolly and naive that raise the speed stat but timid lowers your attack hasty lowers your defense jolly lowers your special attack and naive lowers your special defense and for this bracket or for these uh natures they kind of kind of they kind of really make sense like, if I'm timid, I'm not really going to be aggressive, so I'm not going to attack. If I'm hasty, I leave myself wide open. If I'm jolly, I don't really, you know, give it my all. Like, I'm, I'm not really very specially attacking or anything like that. And to be honest, if you're naive, then you can't really defend against anybody who's plotting against you. Again, these are just small examples that I use to try to convey my point. You can always find your own, or you can also understand them perfectly fine, and you may not need me to give you my own explanations. Now, my favorite natures are the natures that increase special attack. Most notably, Modest, because it raises special attack and lowers attack. Then you have Mild, 
which lowers defense, quiet, which lowers special defense, and rash, which lowers special defense again. However, calm, gentle, sassy, and careful are your last four that raise special defense. Calm lowers attack, gentle lowers defense, sassy lowers speed, and being careful lowers your special attack. Now, we'll go into these at a later date when we get to natures so that you have a better understanding of how they impact the breeding process. And at the very end of these lessons, we'll put it all together as to how to create or how to uh, breed rather the best possible Pokemon. And with any luck, you too will have a very powerful team because there's no sense in having a well-trained team if their attitudes aren't aligned with what it is you want them to do. So let's talk about Pokemon abilities. The things that make them special, you know? Kind of like how humans can be special at playing basketball, video games, or writing, even music. Now, Pokemon on the other hand, they can at most have three abilities. Two that are normal and one that is hidden and can only be acquired through special means or breeding. Hidden abilities came into play during Generation 5, however that's neither here nor there. What I want to do is simply give you a list of the most notable abilities that you may encounter in a Pokemon battle. So let's start with Effect Spore. Effect Spore says contact may paralyze poison or cause sleep. So the way Effect Spore works is just how it sounds, contact. So you have moves that are physical and moves that are special. Uh, most moves that have like, I guess an attack behind them would be your physical moves and most moves that are special are in my case, what I would define as energy based. So a move like side beam, special attack. A move like karate chop, physical attack. So when you use that karate chop against the Pokemon, whether you know or don't know that its ability is effect spore or can be effect spore, uh, as soon as you make contact with it, you may be paralyzed, poisoned, or your Pokemon may be subject to narcolepsy. Gale Wings is another ability. It's actually a hidden ability for Talonflame, and it's uh, it's pretty unique. I like it because it does something that comes in quite handy for a Pokemon like Talonflame. It gives priority to flying type moves and when I tell you that has saved me so many times and so many Pokemon battles Talonflame is literally easily the ace Pokemon for one of my teams now flying type moves would be anything like fly wing attack roost and in case you're wondering, yes, I have used Gale Wings to get Roost off before my opponent can attack me again. So that's one thing that you may want to, you know, take note of. So if you have a really powerful flying move and you feel like you're not going to go first, if you got Gale Wings, you're going first. And here we have another one, Intimidate. Now, Intimidate is relatively simple to explain. It's almost like scaring your opponent, so much so that they can't attack. In this case, when the Pokemon comes out, it's going to flash its uh, ability, Intimidate, and you're going to notice that your Pokemon's attack stat has been lowered. That's pretty much all Intimidate does. It happens every time that Pokemon comes out. So essentially, if they want it, they could just keep switching Pokemon on you and then Intimidate would just keep activating. But once that Pokemon's out, that's it. If it comes out and then you switch for whatever reason, Intimidate's not going to activate again and then make that Pokemon's attack stat lower. It's only like a once per appearance type thing. Oh, and here's a favorite of mine. Uh, levitate now a lot of Pokemon that you would think have this actually don't a lot of Pokemon that look like flyers 
but aren't flyers don't have levitate and there's a way around that too but we'll get to that when we talk about the items so levitate gives full immunity to all ground type moves birds have it regardless because they are birds and they fly but levitate can catch a person off guard if they're uh, unaware of that Pokemon's ability then you have moves like magic guard which says the Pokemon only takes damage from attacks so things like burn poison don't have to worry about them because magic guard so yeah and another one of my favorites is lightning rod which says the Pokemon draws in all the electric type moves to raise its special attack I guess it'd be too much to say, hey, can it raise my uh, speed too? But I guess that'd be kind of cheating. So a fast electric type, electric type Pokemon that has outrageous speed too. Hmm. And I would be remiss without mentioning speed boost. And it sounds exactly like what you would think. Pokemon speed stat is gradually boosted. However, this happens after every turn. So most people try to use strategies where uh, they send out the Pokemon and then they stall for a turn, then they get a speed boost. And then they'll do something else to stall for a turn and they get another speed boost. And then they just keep speed boosting to the point where they use a move called Baton Pass and they pass that speed stat to another Pokemon. And it can be quite devastating if you're unprepared or if you don't know about it. So try to look out for that. I'm not going to lie. I've been caught off guard by a speed boost before. And I personally don't like using a tactic like that simply because it's it's just not me. It's not my play style. And I also want to mention skill link because I think it's really useful it increases the frequency of multi strike moves and if you don't know multi strike moves are moves like fury swipe rollout and um icicle icicle i think it's icicle crash and those moves have a chance of hitting between one and five times but with skill link they hit all five times regardless of anything and that is just so wonderful, especially if you just need that last little nick of damage or if you're super effective, but you're like, oh, my goodness, I don't know if it's going to hit enough times for me to like, uh, you know, kill it or if I'm going to win based off of this, like I have to get lucky. But no skill link hitting five times every time. As a final note, I just want to say that abilities can turn the tide of battle more so than you think. They, when used in conjunction with items, can really make Pokemon battles go either way. So it's always nice to pay attention to what abilities you want your Pokemon to have, what natures you want your Pokemon to have. It all comes together, I promise you. It's just it takes time it takes time research and a lot of patience nothing happens overnight moving on so let's uh, examine these two pictures of two different talent flames um, on the left you have a talent flame that is mild in nature and has the ability flame body and it's holding the item amulet coin and now on the right you have a talent flame that is adamant has the hidden ability gale wings and is holding an item called choice band now if we look back to our uh, list for natures and whatnot we know that an adamant nature uh, increases attack but decreases special attack while a mild nature increases special attack but lowers defense <laughs> now um that's gonna be good in the long run for uh the talent flame on the right as all of those moves hit physically so gale wings is gonna definitely let brave bird go first flare blitz is gonna go Flare Blitz is, is going to be that much stronger because of the adamant nature. It doesn't really have to worry about, you know, the loss of special attack because none of these moves are special attacks. All of them are, are physical. And then you have the Talon Flame on the left, 
who's going to have a higher special attack. But Brave Bird, Fly, and Tailwind aren't really a good move set. But to offset this, they have Swords Dance. So, you know, I guess, uh, you know, I guess things will even out. Uh, Flame Body will come in handy uh, for this particular Pokemon because contact with a Pokemon could cause burn, which is, you know, always useful. And remember, any Pokemon that is burned or has the burn status has their attack halved. They're just not going to hit as strong as they could. And that's understandable. Um, the Amulet Coin. Now, I mentioned this before. The Amulet Coin, of course, this Pokemon just has to show up to battle. Basically, you throw it out, withdraw it, you're good. Choice Band. Here's where things get a little more rigorous. So, the Choice Band increases attack. But, like I said, you can only use one move at a time. Now... It has U-Turn in its moveset, and U-Turn is a move that says, hey, you attack, you go back to your Pokemon trainer, and you send out the next Pokemon, free of charge. It's it's not the same as just manually switching Pokemon. You're attacking and, and leaving, basically. Um, Sleep Talk, I'm not really sure why that's on there for this particular Pokemon. Uh, it could come in handy if they know they're going against something that could put them to sleep or if they're expecting someone to be able to put them to sleep or anything like that um but yeah mostly these uh these two pokemon while they are the same their stats of course are different and i do want to point out that every pokemon will be different in terms of stats it's not like oh i caught a tile flame you caught a tile flame they're both gonna have like you know 224 attack when by the time they reach 100 that's all in how you raise them and it's all because of their natures ivs and you know their experiences through battling and whatnot so that ends my overview on pokemon natures and abilities and uh we're just gonna move on to pokemon items now Okay, now everybody has that one special item that like totally does not leave their hand or their person at any time now for Pokemon it can be a consumable item or it can be just something that they hold and in battle it just makes them stronger whatever it is it's a wonderful thing to have an item for Pokemon so I would say the bottom tier of making a good Pokemon team is natures, abilities, items, and moves. But moves are kind of mid to second tier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mention a couple of noteworthy items and exactly how they work. So you have my favorite, the air balloon. And it says, when held by a Pokemon, the Pokemon will float into the air. When the holder is attacked, this item will burst. So basically, you get Levitate for free. Any Pokemon. Every Pokemon that's holding air balloon. Levitate for free. If you heard on cash, Amulet Coin. An item to be held by a Pokemon, it doubles a battle's prize money if the holding Pokemon joins in. So it doesn't even have to, like, stay in the whole match. You just throw it in throw it out and when you win hopefully you win you know you get double the prize money now that's not gonna work against like a human player but you know it's just one of those in-game things two I'm sorry not two but three items that sometimes I get confused because I have multiples and sometimes I misplace some of them and everything's just a choice there's Choice Band, Choice Scarf, and Choice Specs. Choice Band raises attack, but only one move can be used. Choice Scarf raises speed, but only one move can be used. And Choice Spec raises special attack. But guess what? Only one move can be used. The only way that you get around this is if you switch out. And 9 times out of 10, you kind of just got to be committed because switching out just so you can use a different move will actually hurt you in the long run so it's something that you really have to think about now if you have a type of pokemon that 
you really like it and you don't want it to evolve or if you're knowledgeable and you're saying okay so this Pokemon's gonna learn this move at level 32 but at level 26 it evolves so I don't want to keep pressing like the B button to keep it from evolving there is an item called an Everstone and when this Pokemon is holding this item it prevents it from evolving at first I thought it was the stupidest thing ever because I couldn't understand why you would want to do that and then I remember playing Pokemon Yellow and having like a Charmander and like Charmander learns Flamethrower like level 38 and I was like oh man I could totally use that Flamethrower like early on in the game the problem was it uh evolves into Charmeleon at I think like 15 or 16 it evolves into Charizard at like 36 and the higher the evolution the more pushback the moveset becomes so like Charizard learns fire spin at level 55 or 56 in Pokemon Yellow if I were to keep it from evolving Charmander could learn fire spin at level 42 so that's like a huge huge gap that's a big distance moving on to more of the items and note uh honorable mentions you have focus band and focus sash they kind of work the same but one is more effective than the other focus band says that the holder may endure a potential ko attack leaving it with just one hp it's not a guaranteed but you know it's something Focus Sash, on the other hand, says if it has full HP, the holder will endure one potential KO attack, leaving it with one HP. Now, I prefer Focus Sash over Focus Band simply because 9 times out of 10, if you're really unlucky, that Pokemon's probably going to get smacked to hell. Focus Band, I, I feel lucky, but I don't feel that lucky. Like, I'm not dirty hairy lucky. I just... I don't know it's, it's it's a complicated type of look that I have when it comes to certain things Then you have other moves I mean not other moves other items that are like plates and basically when you hold them they increase the power of uh, that type of move and those plates are more so meant for like a certain legendary Pokemon you have berries that they can hold some berries such as the citrus berry uh, restore like 10% HP and as we all remember HP is uh, short for hit points and then uh, you have another favorite item called life orb so remember when I was talking about the choice items and how they increase uh, attack special attack and speed but you can only use like one move well life orb it increases the power of moves so you can use mold, you can use all your moves, all four of your Pokemon moves, but you lose HP each turn. Now it says each turn, but I think it's each time you, I guess, uh, use a move that makes contact. I've never, I've never not used the move. I've never like not made contact with a Pokemon move. And it still take my HP. So that's one thing I probably have to look into. Now, uh, as far as being on your own out in the Pokemon world, like not playing another human player, and you're just trying to like raise your Pokemon, a really good item to look out for is the Lucky Egg. Uh, it earns extra experience points in battle. And that... I promise you will be like the keys to the kingdom when it comes to uh, training your Pokemon lucky egg and especially if you can get more than one also look out for nuggets they uh, they can be sold for I think five thousand dollars of Poke dollars five thousand Poke dollars but yeah those are just some of the uh, notable Pokemon items in the world not all of them can be held not all of them you know can be consumed but 
they are they serve they serve a purpose I, I will say that about items in this game everything serves a purpose it's not like they give it to you and you don't use it ever or you don't know why you have it it's it's there for a purpose now I'm gonna put in the uh, description below links to where you can read up more on types natures abilities and items and you know you can just read through them all on your own time and uh, the next video will cover TMs and HMs and I have to really take some time to um, to look through that and that will actually be my last video before Pokemon Sun and Moon comes out after that I'm gonna wait until like maybe January of uh, next year and we're going to uh, we're going to pick up and resume the spring session I need to take a little bit of a break and figure out you know how I want to improve upon the class because I'm improving every time I have to do one of these videos and I just want to make sure that I get the best possible most detailed and accurate information to you so if I'm wrong on anything please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section below like rate and subscribe and peace and safety on the path thank you and have a good day